Welcome back to another video. I'm the average fan and today I will be listening to Dude Ranch by Blink-182. I already listened to one more time the new Blink-182 album and now I will do a couple of videos where I'm starting with Dude Ranch, then I will listen to Anim of the State, Take It From Pants and Jacket, The Untitled, maybe Boxcar Racer and Plus 41, uh, plus, plus 44, what the heck, and then uh, Neighborhoods, Dogs Eating Dogs, all the albums, um, if YouTube will let me do it and not um, block any of this. But today we will start with um, Dude Ranch. I just um, ripped all my CDs, all my Blink albums and I, I have them all. Here's a photo. I will start with Dude Ranch now with the first song, Pathetic. My god, that sound is like ridiculously bad. When you, I um it's not produced by Jerry Finn, it was the last album before Jerry and the mix is the mix is very dull and muddy. But it's so raw from the vocals and Tom sounds so raspy. Sounded so raspy back then. I think I'm different. To me, I'm a big Blink fan, as you might know. Um, and Dude Ranch is the only album before Jerry Finn that I'm able to listen to. I think Shire Cat. The sound was just too bad. Maybe if it's uh, it has a better sound, they need to re-record it. Silverstein did this with. Um, some of their songs on two albums. I think it worked out great. Then I may, might be able to enjoy Cheshire Cat, but I listened to it at the beginning of the year when I was walking my dog. Um, and yeah, it's really, I can't, I can't enjoy it. It's, the singing is so off. Nice part here. I love that breakdown. <laughs> Don't pull me down, this is where I'm... I think I'm different! I love the dynamics back then between Mark's warmer, softer voice and Tom's aggressive, raspy voice. It worked out so good. It was one big part of what, of why I loved Blink in the first place. And um, yeah, because of the three of them. The, Personality, actually. But back then, Scott Rayner was the drummer. I know until this day there are discussions on, in, on Reddit and the internet. He's the, he's the best, better drummer. And I really don't know what's wrong with these people. Because he's playing so sloppy. It's like. Yeah, I mean, he was the youngest of them all, but in my opinion, it, he wasn't a very good drummer because he wasn't able to stay in, like, click in, yeah, timing. Timing was just bad. And when the drummer's timing is bad, and I know what I'm talking about because drums are my first instrument and my best instrument, when a drummer is bad and bad in timing, then the whole band suffers from it. You are not able to play on on time as a guitarist, as a guitar player, when the drummer is not playing on time, because you have to, yeah, go with the drums and everything suffers from it. I mean, it's punk, so it's fine for it. Um, I mean, I, I listened to um, Offspring my whole life and I love them. And uh, when you listen to the Smash album or Ignition, yeah, the drums are just as bad, you know. Yeah, the sound is really not good. But love the claps. Cool production idea. Um, yeah, I love this song on the um, live album. Where the break is right there. I think. Yeah, um... I mean, the live album produced by Jerry Finn sounds way better. So I, that was the first time when I was able to enjoy Dude Ranch songs because the production was way better. 
and I know not everything was really live. They re-recorded a lot of stuff, I think, maybe even vocals, for sure guitars and everything to make it cleaner and then mixed it with live sequences. Or maybe the only thing live were, were the jokes. I don't really know. Oh, my. Na, na, na. Na, na, na. One thing is for sure, the way they were writing songs back then had its charm and was totally different from today. Bass solo! One, two, three, four! Yeah, of course, damn it. Take your pants off. Who else have to say that line every time the riff starts, uh, the drums come in? Knew it! You leave it! You must have a reason! Aggressive mark. Falling down. Falling down. What really is crazy? That damn it is until this day maybe even their most known song, and it's on Dude Ranch. It's before their uh, breakthrough. Of course, all the small things is uh, on one Spotify. Let me check how many plays it has. Faces on the road like this. Uh, 260 million. No, okay, no. I was talking bullshit. All the small things is heading up to the one billion mark. Holy moly! I love that they just recorded the vocals that often until it was in pitch. It was good. Because nowadays I, I have my problems. I think they maybe recorded once or twice. Uh, and then Melodyne will do the rest. Well, I guess this is growing up. Well, I guess this is growing up. How old this all is. I cannot believe it. I always like this one. I like the riff. 1997. This album is old. Nothing. Such a crazy chorus. Oh my God, it's boring. All right. The tempo changes. All right. Man, I won't. I am not getting warm with the sound. Uh, it's really not that good. <laughs> Was this the only album with this kind of humor and this skits in between songs? I, I think so. Until now with when I teach masturbation and I was like, have fun with it. Oh, what sound. There's really no album that lives from the production. And I kind of love with the, this older punk records that, that they have a raw sound like that. I remember back then when I was listening to more of Green Day. Nowadays, I I don't know. I found I find them to be a little boring because I think all the songs are just power chords and um, everything sounds too similar. But back um, Dookie, I think it was released in '94. And when you compare it to um, the Smash album of Offspring and with the Shashire Cat album, 
um, Green Day sounds the best for a, for an album that old. And I wasn't able to enjoy Sh Shashire Cat because of that, because I always thought, why does it sound so bad? Today I know that they that Blink wasn't as big, not nearly, and I, they hadn't um, the money to record it better, I think. Yeah, Dude Ranch is the first album I was able to kinda enjoy. For something new, and yesterday I thought of you. The acoustic guitar. <laughs> Completely 16th notes. I think it's cool that they um, use the uh, acoustic guitar in that song. You don't hear that pretty often in a raw punk song like this. Once before. I mean, it also sounds a little bit crazy, unusual. But it makes this song ha have much character because of the acoustic guitar. To do. No, it's a loose. Nothing to do. It's just me. Because I blew it once before. What a crazy voice Tom DeLong had back then. And I read so many stuff about it. Inter I love this. Yeah, one of my favorites of the album for sure. Um, I read so many interviews about his singing and voice and uh, watched so many videos. And oh, Tom always said he tried to sound like the Descendants. So when you, th when you discuss this topic, Tom's voice, um, I want to hear his real voice again not the angels now waves blah, blah, blah. what is it what even is his real wo real voice maybe today's voice or angels now waves voice is his normal singing voice when he tried to sound like descendants then he even forced something back then he was like i think you need some time alone he, when he was trying to sound as raspy as possible because he loved all these punk bands like the descendants he um tried to sound as good as possible for that punk stuff and on Angels Now Waves he did the same thing but with another genre so going to be just another time game. yeah I, I haven't listened to Dude Ranch nearly as often as from Enema on so I don't n always know the lyrics <laughs> what are you supposed to do but I listened to it Definitely, like, 20 times, 30 times, I don't know, man. Yeah, maybe 30. I think from now on, the album gets better, in my opinion. I mean, Pathetic is pretty cool, but, like, Voyeur, yeah, damn it. Boring is okay, Thick Lips is okay, but I think Waggy... Enthused, Untitled, Apple Shampoo. Yeah, Bwaggy is pretty awesome from all the guitars in it. Really well done, Mr. Tom DeLong, Mr. Thomas. And I don't think that you're the one. What's wrong with my head? I have, uh, also have a, an orange hat here, just as Tom DeLong. I don't know if it will fit my pullover. <laughs> yeah, let's try this. It's never over till it's done. And I don't think that you're the one. I love this little riff. I miss these guitar playing and what is awesome about this album when you compare it to one more time you are so able to hear all the guitars clearly you, you kind of can imagine the strumming you can see Tom playing it and I don't know they failed to deliver that with the new album you are only able to tell how Travis is playing because it's so loud and so present and triggered and the guitars, they are there, 
and they're filling up like the space and it's just like a pad and in some parts and on some songs it's better but on other songs it's you really d cannot figure out what actual rhythm the guitar is playing you can't figure it out um, if you enjoy these videos follow me because I will just as I mentioned I will try to do it this with every album and I did an, an video I did a video with um, a list of the most progressive Blink-182 songs and it, it, it includes this one because I think just the beginning had so many parts, so many riffs and it changes every time. Go! Um, yeah, I think it's um, pretty progressive for an old album like this, an old classic punk album. And what is the chorus? It, I cannot find a chorus in this song. It's really progressive in its way. What's your favorite Blink-182 album? Maybe it's Doodrench. I know a lot of people out there will disagree with me that albums before Jerry Finn were not as good because they're a little older or just have another musical taste. And if it's for me, not the boring story. Um, yeah, a lot of people out there love the uh, love Cheshire Cat and Dude Ranch. Yeah, and there's an it was an EP, right? Um, they came to conquer Uranus. Let me show you something I'm looking at that you can't see. Oh yes, well, this is the poster, official poster of the um, Cologne concert where I was at this year. Hello. Chasing me. Oh man, it's so it's so not in pitch, not in tune. I don't know how I say it. Now I give up. It is tonally off. Is that how you would say it? Hmm. I don't know, man. It's not a change of right. I love this song, man. Don't spend with you. This game, then I wait for your call. Now I give. But with this one as well, uh, sound-wise, for sure, the um, the Tra Travis Mark Tom show sounds better. What's an actual name? I really don't know the order of the names. It is the Mark Tom and Travis show. That's it. <laughs> the animal strikes back. <laughs> Hey, it's over! So crazy to put some ah in there. It sounds so crazy, man. Yeah, a little skit out for What? It'll clear up. I promise. I got some ointment for it. The doctor says it's not infectious. It'll be gone in a week. Oh. <sighs> yeah, time for a change. Ding, do to see if you... With a, I always said, with a better sound, this one could have been also uh, on Enem of the State. Totally. My God. It is an exciting, exciting, the stories of kind words are hurting when routine gets boring. Both both or maybe even take off a pencil jacket. I don't know. Oh, maybe it's maybe it's too fast for take off a pencil jacket. This classic punk beat stuff. Um, it was it was an enema, but on take off a pencil jacket, it um, not as much. Maybe even just 
Happy Holidays? No, online songs. Yeah, but the style changed a lot. And I kind of can see well, when people loved, just loved this punk beat style, that they were not happy with the direction um, of Take Off Your Pants and Jacket. I think Take Off Your Pants and Jacket does not get enough love. I, I, I don't get what's the problem for some people with this album. Because production and sound wise, it's such, it's my favorite album. The thing is, because I'm German, I'm not paying that much of attention to the meaning of the lyrics. And I think when you're a native speaker, you kind of have to, because yeah, you understand everything. And when some words just in your ear does not do not sound good, then you think the song is not good as well. But I'm not listening. I don't understand. I mean, yeah, when I look up the lyrics and so, but I don't care, you know, I'm just for the composition and the, the sound. Yeah, so I um, Take a Fancy Jacket was along was my favorite Blink album and I still think it's great be, because the production is, is great and it has great songs. Of course, I think the Untitled is like the, it's so creative. It's it was so such a new thing to do. Um, but yeah, it, it was a drastic change from what we all known from Blink before. Um, oops. My God. Yeah, so, so I'm pretty surprised that this is like the most loved Blink album because it had such a drastic change of what Blink was before. About it. The sound really has too many bass frequencies, too many muddy frequencies in there. I don't care much about this song. Emo. And I think it works the other way around with this lyric thing. I think songs that I found boring, that I found boring, other maybe native speakers think it's so awesome but they don't even notice that it's mostly because of the vocals because of the lyrics that i don't care about because i'm not listening to them in the first place um yeah so the music is the first thing that come that gets to me and the melodies and the arrangement and the sound so i read uh, stuff in the internet yeah that song is so awesome man and uh, this and that lyric and yeah it's so great and i think it's actually not that special of the composition and I yeah, figured out that maybe it's because of the lyrics they found this song to be awesome and I can't do that. What's your favorite song of the album? Write it in the comments. Mine is... I don't know man, maybe... Enthused or Apple Shampoo Weggy. I also like A New Hope. And you can't pick the singles. Don't pick Josie and damn it. Come on. It's too boring. Boring! Alright! But back then, just as I mentioned, the dynamics between uh, Tom's voice and Mark's voice were just perfect. So good. It was a big thing that what made Blink so popular, I think, and stood out from other bands. Now, Josie. I love Josie. This bass. Yeah, my girlfriend. I just had a little clay lintel, clay fall. It's just such a simple song, just power chords. One time he plays, he plays them high and low. I 
what I really like is that Mark on the new album there are some moments where he um, has this raspiness again and I love that he should do it more often I know that he won't do it live because uh, it's really not good to your vocal cords I think but when you do it for recording I mean how many times do you record this vocal two or three maybe five times and then it's over so uh, I think it really sounds awesome when he's going for the a little more anger a couple days ago I I saw a discussion online on how Mark used to write way better lyrics before Feldy era and even I can kind of see that and I don't know why maybe maybe it's because of Feldman he changed his writing style he used to put way more thoughts and um, time in lyrics I think what how do you think about it I always love parts where with uh, just drums and bass maybe it's because I'm drummer and my best friend plays the bass maybe I know that everything know that everything know that everything I always love this switches between Tom and Mark know that everything everything's gonna be fine everything's gonna be fine What's up with this cut at the end of the song, man? Yeah, th I love this song. Even the start. Such a great feeling, man. This is what I love about Blink. It's so melodious. melodious. Have you ever wondered how one of these songs would have sounded when Travis was in the band? Because... Every beat is like um, Travis is more creative. Princess Leia, you denied. Ah, they really were going for the ah stuffs on this album. I'm such a jerk for productions, and I, if the production on this album were be was better, it would, would be so much easier for me to enjoy it. I mean, I know that I love this song. I love the feeling, I love the harmonies but it would be so much better for me if the production was better. Maybe one day we will be able to um, rip the CD, put it in an um, AI tool and say hey let's mix this uh, with the sound of Tech of Pants and Jacket and it's not even unrealistic. It's, it's just a matter of time I think. Part is a little weird. Tonally. I always wondered why why people or men thought Carrie Fisher was hot. Because I don't think so. Maybe I was too young when I watched the Star Wars, so. Song. It's just so funny. Cross the street, naked at night. night. Bend over, there's just some light. More like some bear, and I go down. down. Nude in a gutter is how it was found. Turn in a peace guard and the door slam. No noise of silence is a It's totally off. Side. Bend over. Yeah, Tom was way more using his guitar back then. He was really trying to give it all. And I really dig in it. I miss that these days. 
I'm very happy that the new album has riffs like Dance With Me and stuff like that. So it's a big step up from um, Neighborhoods or Dog Seeding Dogs. There wasn't really much... So, yeah, I, I, I can't remember really riffs. I mean, yeah, Wishing Well had a riff, Natives maybe, but yeah. <laughs> He was writing way more melodies on the guitar. That's cool, man. I mean, it's just the three of them. They have a guitar, they have a bass, they have drums. Start creating more music just with that. I saw um, on Reddit to, to, this morning um, what we wish for the next Blink album. And actually, I hope for ma more major songs, more like self-titled untitled like and yeah just raw more raw sound <laughs> more raw some stuff more raw songs yeah a little darker not that too anima stylish it's it's cool but on the other side they're not 20 anymore you know oh yeah i love the feeling of that song as well maybe Lemmings even is my favorite with a new hope. I think a new hope and lemmings are my favorites. Yeah Is it too much to ask for the things to work out this time? Oh, yeah, for what is mine? I want it everything Let me look up what song has the most plays that are not singles Oh Man the drums are just not good not on time um, Lemmings 4.4 million, A New Hope 6 million. Okay, Waggy 10 million. Yeah, Waggy is really well received, well liked. Uh, Pathetic 16, it's the opening song. Yeah, is it too much to ask for the things to work out this time? Yeah. I always loved those kind of riffs and the bass going for the the notes for the changes the chords it's way more interesting than when you just play power chords and that's my problem actually with green day these days i think it's too boring it's something missing there that makes it interesting to my ears those little stuff Yeah, power chords here, totally fine with it, because it's not the whole time. I mean, Green Day is like composing rhythmic with power chords. It's like melodious in with power chords. But yeah. And the last one. Maybe this were the first steps where they wanted to write another song, a song that is not just go, 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 go. but it's just yeah baby steps. It's just they haven't figured it out yet how to write these kind of songs. Yeah, I'm digging the switch though. And here we are again. It works. It really works better. The intro. Really, a, a really long song, but I think there's an outro, right? And the album has a running time of uh, 45 minutes, 15 songs. But it's really crazy how raspy he sounds because he can't go for the voice today. Not as, not this raspy. And Mark still sounds pretty close when you um, consider recording techniques changed and that they, that they have an impact on um, the sound of an album uh, or the voice vocals but what i really like is that you really hear the vocals kind of raw i hate this on the new album their vocals sound too thin too robotic and too auto-tuned actually i want to hear 
the vocals as if Tom is standing in front of the microphone just as I'm doing now and I'm wearing headphones and it's like just in my ears and I'm realizing now as I'm through with this album I'm really digging some of the songs but I'm not enjoying it as much listening to the album as a full I mean I put I put the songs that I like in my playlist that is maybe Waggy that is Enthuse that is Apple Shampoo maybe Josie sometimes maybe Dammit sometimes uh, New Hope and Lemmings the time is over just for just it's it just it, it needs more variety yeah and here we go it's the end of the album dude range oh yeah, oh, yeah. oh man too many beers what what's going on oh yeah there we go <sighs> okay oh no wait hang on a second oh yeah rexy here boy <laughs> Here, Rex. Come on, boy. Come on, boy. Oh, good boy. Oh, you want to drink, don't you? You're and my dog is laying dog. right here, beneath, here. behind me. There you go. Here, drink a little drink. There you go. Good doggy. Oh. Good doggy. Oh, Rex, you like that, huh? That's Such you, Rex. a dumb humor. Let me show you my dog. Oh, that was five times soon. <laughs> He's not understanding what's happening. There was Dude Ranch. Um, I think I said everything I wanted to say. Make sure you subscribe to my channel because this will continue. Next up, Anima of the State. Jerry Finn's first hands on the band. Um, let me know in the comments what era do you like most, what album do you like most. And um, yeah, I think that's it. If you're interested in this um, video I told you about, um, most progressive Blink-182 songs. You can check it out now. And I hope to see you in the next video. I'm the Average Fan and I'm out of here.